front of the door and closed the door, locked it, the door lock, and said, go ahead, tell of you, you cannot go inside that, you have to cross my dead body. I'm willing to die for my family. That is special to me. So loving wife and loving the children means you are at the point of sacrificing everything for them. So they will be happy as you are doing it in the name of the Lord. And in return, there is what we call a symbiosis, reciprocal movement. When the wife and the children, to your example, they will do the same thing. Husband and example. So in the context of Christian home, husband and wife, as far as leadership, man has to be the leader. As far as uh, Christianity is concerned, when it comes to minor things and other things, just to each other, submit yourself one to another, the Bible says. Have a listening ear. That's why God has given us one mouth to talk and two ears to listen. Have a listening ear and give importance to some suggestions of the wife because some are beneficial for their family. Do your a leader listen because when it is for the good of their family, let's go for it. Anything that is for peace and joy and comfort that glorify the Lord that is from God or perfect things belongs from God. Amen? Okay. Another thing is, very quick, recipient of the, of the people to be happy today, their hope is to be happy. Okay? In America, and I believe it's happening in Australia, okay, I believe this thing is here. There's what, what we call a cultural recipient. These are I want you to hear it. All cultures are tainted by sin. There is no perfect Filipino, American, Australian culture. There is no perfect culture. It is tainted by sin. The only culture that is perfect is the culture from God. Okay? So don't embrace this kind of thing. This is what I've happened to me. This is what I learned. So we'll have what we call the culture of the day, the 21st century. They are receiving of something to make people happy. They to be so free. Here we are. Happy, okay? It is a trend that people is looking for something that will make their life fulfilled or happy. I give you an example today. Something, something. No one can disturb my personal belonging in my personal room, me, me, me alone. Okay. I was a counselor from in America to military men, so I was uh, you know, exposed to that. It's surprising that today, even though this is what's happening, I'm not talking to, to you, but in general, understand what's happening in the world today. Daughters and sons will rebuke their parents that this is my personal thanks. Don't dare to touch anything that belongs to me and don't even question me. 10 to 14 years old, living independently under the roof and under the leadership of their parents. Very shocking changes today. Under the roof of the parents who feed them everything and they have their own say, I am living independent, don't ever touch me and bother me. That is a shifting that is not godly, demonic, and destroyer in nature. Okay? A little bit strong, but that's happening to the many young people. And there's hope of that. And in America, military men, great men, said, Pastor, these are unbelievers. Uh, once you touch your kids with the belt, and somebody told me in 1996, Pastor, I am a military man, I'm almost. Keeping the face of my son, I can do that. Uh, my son is kicking everything in my home. It's a big home in Chula Vista. And, and, and they said, they threatened us. I will report you to the police. These are 16 years old. I was confronted with that. Pastor, what can you say? I have to be wise in the biblical context. How would I advise? And said, he admitted. Okay, Pastor, I'll do what you said. And today, that boy is a straight boy. They follow the principle of the Lord that I taught him. So Pastoral leaders in the Fiji lose their loving authority and the government of the land took over how to run the family, which is not their family, they took over how to run the family. The life of our generation revolves in privacy to them alone. And no one can touch that. Up limits to everyone. This is one of the weapons of Satan's kingdom to destroy family, to cut up closeness and get a family relationship. Now, there is no check and balances 
and no accountability, no asking of anybody, I do not say to anybody, it is for myself, no way, it is for myself, I can handle it. Listen to me. I was in a train one afternoon, teens, about three teenagers, maybe 12, 13, and 14, I was in the train, okay, going to Mount Ruiz from Black Town. Now, this teenager, 12, 13, they had their, their singing and, and something that is lack of their ear and the music, sitting in their kicking and everything, and I was just observing. I was praying, and to my surprise, they were screaming and shouting and singing, sex, 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 sex. 12, 13, and 14, so some of the oldest people there just bowed their head, and they were embarrassed. They're not no, no respect, they don't care as long they pacify, as long they're happy, as long they can express what was in their inside. Sex, sex, sex. Ha ha ha! I told myself, oh, Lord, have mercy. I was crying inside, and all I can do was to pray for them. And so, then, so they aborted babies and sexually active, and some believers, some believers, some, not many, fallow. What the world think is acceptable. Church, what's our impact on our family like this? There is what they call balance. Now, the selfish culture that put aside God in an interest to the advices of father and mother or pastors or older people to help them, listen to me, has a dear weight. We see this in the news every day. The result was a mess. My wife yesterday called me and said, Can you bring me to my work? There was a special work that she did yesterday. Why? Because uh, it happened that before Mount Druid suffered from St. Mary to Mount Druid, someone jumped on the train station and ran over by the train by committing suicide. It's a mess. What is needed today? is the hope to realize young people, husband and wife, is communication about your private, about your problems. I have heard so many for the last 40 years of problems, I cry with them. I get you to it and once I receive, I bring it to the Lord. Problems so that the hours from hell will not destroy you. I suggest you don't keep the problem to yourself. Husband, why don't you keep it to yourself? Oh, I can manage, I can hold it, I can, I can control. I, I want you to know one day, it will just burst out in the result is traumatic. Jan Bonyan said, He who runs from God in the morning will scarcely find him the rest of the day. In other words, if there is no prayer, there is no counsel, prayer, even by telephone. Once a person set aside God in the kind of culture, you will never find rest in your life. There is no rest. The last point. Money, accomplishment, everything, there is no answer there. The last one is, this is the thing. This is the climax, hoping God. Even more, five minutes of this. Hope in God is the answer to the many problems facing the vast wide world of 7 billion population today. Hope in God. There are great men of God in influential and in say something about God in the Bible. First President of America, George Washington said, It is impossible to rightly govern the world without God in the Bible. Wow! Another president of America, Andrew Jackson, the book, the Bible, on which our republic rests. America rests in the Bible from the very beginning. Once you put it aside, trouble. Abraham Lincoln, one of the greatest presidents, it is the duty of nation, as well as men to recognize the truth, announce in the Holy Scripture, and proven by all history that those nations only are blessed whose God is the Lord. Wow! That is a profound statement proven in the history. If a wicked runs the world or be torn in chaos, if a righteous 
man, depending on the word of God and believing God, there is rejoicing all over the land. It's from the biblical word. You know what? Here in verse 5, 1, 2, 3, go back there, take note here, and take home with the message. Verse 5. Thank you. Why are you cast down on my soul? Why are you disappointed within me? Hoping God, for I shall yet praise Him for the help that is come to us. There's a journey, a time element in our life where we are not always in the mountain. There might be some problems. God allowed that. He is not the author, but that is to equip you to become strong. The muscle becomes strong to be able to resist and be able to go through the fire to the end to see Jesus. Now, first thing that you can do is preach to yourself. You look at this man. Hey, Danny, why are you cast down? You have to preach yourself. Why are you so troubled over your morning? Hey, wake up. Why are you quiet? You know, the first thing you can do, there is a will inside of you. I want you to get that. Don't the loneliness in the morning I'll be like this forever. There's a loneliness, there's a problem. No, no, no. Why are you quiet then? Why are you so discouraged in the morning? Gandhi, wake up. And what I'll do? I will stand. No, I am determined. I'll make a decision. I'll make it right by the help of God. Amen. Number two. Another so foundation is number two is I'll put my hope in God. Take note of that. There is a very strong solution and remedy to the many problems you and I are facing today. You are probably facing one or two or three today in the people in the vast universe. There is no answer. This insecurity of money, fame, success, investment, going to many places. Though I tell you, those are material things. It will never satisfy the longing and the desires of God. Those are material things. There must be a spiritual plan that will give you joy unspeakable and that is a spiritual image of not material things that will be touched, seen, and heard. Here is the word of God. Some nation boasts of their armies and weapons. Psalm 20, verse 78. But there is a man of God, but we boast in the Lord. Those nations will fall down and collapse. But we will rise up and stand firm. The Lord God is our hope in answer to all our problems. Don't depend on mine, in your strength, in your ability to plan, to make a multi-millionaire one day, in your ability to be still young and strong, and I have all the ornaments, all the, the things, the uh, kind of alternatives, and I will skip to the very, very end of this. No, no, no. Hope in God. Because nothing in this world you can trust on. Everything is shaken. Everything is to be shaken. But they that trust in the Lord, they will not be shaken like the mountain of Zion. Amen. It's dead and forever. Last thing. In verse 4, when I remember these things, I pour out my soul within me, for I used to go with the multitude, I went with them to the house of God. And the voice of joy and praise, the multitude that came up to me, was here number 3, key to have this wonderful hopeful feel, going back to the house of worship and enjoying the fellowship of the saints. That's why. I praise you because you can probably be somewhere else and have fun and picnic or movie, but you choose to come to worship the Lord. God will remind you that that hope is established. I come to you. The world is looking for hope. And where they can put their trust for tomorrow. Many of them close their eyes in the journey of life and never reach their dreams. In realization and all the fulfillment of the hope that rests on material things. A friend of mine, senior years in college, I didn't even know, but I got into the story to the point. He said, at age 13, 14, I killed my stepdad because he, he was beating my mom and told us I beat him and used a sharp knife to kill him at age of 14 or 15. 
I was surprised. I was in the fourth year in college. But something happened. I come to know the Lord. And I was attending in the Montegro Pavilion Prison every May. The Port Square Church there inside the Pavilion Prison I attend. I become a Christian. And I don't believe what I done. One day, President Marcos declared that I was a pardon. Everything was the rest. He got out of the Bible College. We become classmates with the senior year. He said to me, you know, that's my story. I hope in God that the sun won't be, that the virus will be. I got it. And God has changed me. You know, not here. Face to face. He so humble and kind, but very God even though know, I was a monster in the early days because my mom was still alive. But today God has changed my life. And he said, you know what? Today he is the pastor of one of the biggest church, churches in the house because of the This morning, in the coming year, you will feel safe and well when we apply the secret in the Bible of a man of God as we apply it in our lives. Make up your minds and say, I will make it as far as from I can make it, I can face it by the help of God to overcome the problems and walk once again on the top of my problems. Number two, I will put my trust no matter what will happen in Australia and America and the whole world with all the things. I end up one after the other. I will put my trust in the Lord. Because of Him, I will not be shaken. And number three, I will go back to the place where I can be recharged, my strength, go to church, and do fellowship, and fill the love of my brothers and sisters in the Lord. As we move to 2015, let us hold hands together and apply this principle. And the blessing of God be upon us all. In Jesus' name. But we thank you.